Hello, networkers, and welcome back to another episode for Ask the Network Engineer. My name is Michael Tomatis, and if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and also check out all of the videos in our list for Ask the Network Engineer. I talk about a lot of different um, suggestions and recommendations and answering many of your questions. Great questions, so if you're new, make sure to check out all the videos in that playlist. If you want to support this channel, then go to rodhub.net. We got a lot of great training material out there like Netgear to a lot of Cisco related training that we have, SD-WAN security training, check it out. Furthermore, go to our wish list page and vote on training that you would like to see us produce and release within our training collection. So check out all that information. Okay, so in this particular episode, I want to ask, or answer one of the questions that was posted up on our website for Ask the Network Engineer. And this time, this question comes from someone who posted the following. Where can I find practical network engineering information? Uh, the last two interviews I went, I went to had technical questions a lot different than my certification materials. Okay. Let's talk about that. When I first saw that question initially, I was going through a couple of ideas of how I want to do this video. And I said, mm, cause I had an answer, but I said, but I don't think, I don't think they're going to like my answer because that is what practical training or practical learning is. Um, now this question goes into another question that I'm going to be answering very soon, which is about exam dumps and cheating among network engineers. There's some similarities um, between those two particular questions. So I'm going to answer your question and tell you what you can do for gaining or understanding some kind of practical learning. Now I understand what the question is really getting at. People are going in for interviews. They're certified. So you know the concepts, you know how to configure something, but the questions that are being asked are more practical, right? And of course you're saying, I don't have that practical experience because there's no way for me to obtain that practical experience unless I am working as a network engineer. So something has to give. And I think a big part of that is because of the exam dumps and the cheating that's going on. Um, but I want to, um, reserve that for that topic only. Okay, let's focus on practical learning, practical training that you may be looking for because that might better that might better your chances of being a network engineer. Okay, so the key thing to understand about practical learning is this. Practical learning is based on real life, real world experiences of the issues that you are encountering. Okay? There was a question that was posted on here about, you know, why don't you know you guys consider making a troubleshooting training course of troubleshooting any type of a network? And I heard that and I was like, that's a pretty, that's a serious undertaking. And the reason why you don't see that with us or with any other training vendor out there, just do your search out there. No one has that because there is no efficient way of how to do that. Because as I said before, when a problem actually occurs, a problem occurs usually because there is some recent or a user change event, something changed, a service is down, a power outage is occurring, some other third party component is down, something like that. Or there is a software event like a software bug and an upgrade or a downgrade might be required. Or there is a hardware event that occurs like a power supply or the CPU fails or something like that. That is usually what is going to be the result of what is a problem for something. Okay. So that's why you really can't do that. Okay. Let me give you an example. This is a very simple example that happened to me in my home office. Okay. And this will explain why you really can't teach practical um, learning. 
but it really doesn't work. So I was on my computer one day. This was like two years ago. So I'm on my computer and I'm typing up an email. And all of a sudden, I'm typing and there's like other characters being written on the screen that I'm not typing. And I'm like putting my hands up and it's like someone's writing something. And it's just gibberish, like just random characters. Sometimes it would be actual sentences like I am or the store, just something like that. So I just said, oh my gosh, my computer has been has been compromised, has been hacked. So I know what's going on. So I went ahead and I disconnected the network cable from my computer. That typing continued. I said, maybe there's something with the keyboard. Let me disconnect the keyboard. It continued. So I disconnected everything from my computer and eventually it stopped. So now I'm panicking like, what the hell's going on here? So after a while, I went ahead, I did, I rebooted my computer. I did a scan on my computer just to check things out. Everything is good. I checked my firewall logs. Um, there was nothing in there. I did other kind of um, scans, nothing. Everything is good. Okay, so what was it then, right? So I'm doing Google searches, just trying to figure this out. There's nothing out there, right? Besides people saying, yeah, you're getting hacked. No, I'm not getting hacked. I validated all of that. I'm looking at the processes that is running on the system. There's nothing running on the system, right? So I did not, I did not know what it was and I was concerned about that. All right, so a few days later, again, I'm typing something and it happens again. I'm like, what is this? And there's like actual words that are coming up. So again, I go ahead and I disconnect everything. Okay, and I'm still not resolving the problem. But if it happens again, that means that this is a, this is a repeated behavior and something is going on. And I was thinking about just doing a fresh rebuild on my computer. This is what I'm doing because the internet didn't have anything out there. Well, after further investigation, I'm just trying to figure this out, taking it one thing at a time. All right, on my computer, I have which most people do, I have a USB 10 port hub. This is actually an older one that I have. This is the actual one that was on my computer a long time ago. So I have like 10 ports on it. And the idea is that you connect your USB things to it and that connects to your computer, right? Well, connected to one of these USB ports was this. It is one of the Logitech wireless, one of their proprietary type wireless adapters. Because I used to have an old Logitech solar powered um, keyboard that I used with my computer a long time ago. But the Logitech didn't break down too fast, so I just got rid of it. So I just put that keyboard away, but my daughter took the keyboard. So this was still inside of that USB hub. So apparently, I assumed it was broken, but really it was more of an intermittent problem. So my daughter, who was seven or eight at the time, she would just ran, it was in her room and she would just randomly just kind of just type on it. Cause she's wanting, like she's doing something, like she has her computer or something, you know, kids in their imagination. As a result, is being fed through that wireless connection to the adapter to my computer and displaying what she's typing. That's practical learning. That isn't something that is taught. How do you teach that? Practical learning is about the approach. Is the approach that if you are given a project to configure or to troubleshoot, you have the skills and the tools, the approach of how to do it. That is what companies want. So your certifications, they're nothing more but a tool. They are a tool of that you know the concepts, that is still important. That you know how to configure something, that is still important. But they want more things in your 
tool belt. They want that level of expertise. I had a friend that was going to be interviewed as a senior network engineer and he was really like, I'm intimidated by this. They're not going to hire me. I said, no, these guys are looking for a approach. This is what your approach is for how you do, how you design something, how you configure something. If you give them that outline, you're hired. He was hired. Okay. Similar tips and things I've said in all my different episodes on this channel. That is the practical training that people want, that companies want. That's why you can't teach that. Because how do you teach something like this? You can't. And this is something, this is nothing network related. What I'm saying is that this is something that was nowhere on any web page or website out there to begin with. It was basically my approach of how do I troubleshoot something. And my and one of the techniques that I talked about is it is always process of elimination. If something is happening and if it happens twice, that means that it is something that is there. So what is the root cause? You have to break it each thing down one by one. That is the approach. Okay. So that's something I want to make sure I make very clear. That's why you would never see training for troubleshooting and practical learning because you just can't teach that kind of thing. So what can you do? Well, what you can do is you can really just read and look at support forums. Look at the security, uh, sorry, look at the Cisco community support forums. Okay, these are people that are posting questions, like here's my problem. So you can look at what their problem is, look at what their configuration is. Okay, assuming it is something that you know about. So if you don't do wireless, don't look at wireless type questions because you're gonna be confused with that. If you care about routing and switching and VLANs or security and firewalls or data center, focus on those topics, those categories. So look at those forums, look at those questions and see how people are answering the questions. Uh, not for just the fix, you can do that, okay? Uh, but look at more of what their approach is. That's what's really important. I said this before. I've seen a lot of questions that people post on particular problems. I have never encountered those problems ever. Hundreds of problems I see people post, never encounter it. Okay, that's why you really can't teach this. That's why there's no easy website that you can learn from because it's just, you know, that's not what that's really about. Okay, and that is it. Okay, that's what I want to talk about for this episode and what you can do. Is that one, you should be focused, focus on the approach, and two, sure, look at some of these support forums to help you with some practical learning. I just want to make sure that I convey to you that um, why that doesn't really exist and also why companies do ask more practical questions, but that will really get into the next topic that I really want to do officially, which is talk about exam dumps and cheating among network engineers. And thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions about being a network engineer, post that at roundhub.net slash A-N-E. That is important. You can post your questions and you can vote on other questions that are posted by your other fellow member network engineers. Thank you for watching. And until next time, as always, keep networking.